guess at this point we all know we have to get past that intro video. I'll make another one eventually. But here we go. I am talking about some UFO stuff. And this this is another talkie video. But you're going to like it. Or you won't. I don't know. UFO community. We have some issues. Issues we need to work out. And uh, we're not going to get anywhere until we work these out. So this is part of the Cosmic Hoax and Expose by Dr. Stephen Greer. And the whole time I watched this, so I watched this last night. The whole time I watched this, I was like, wow, this is a hit piece. Like, that's all that it is. It, it's, it is a hit piece. And I'm, I'm going to play a little section for you here. And I guess we'll, we'll watch this together. And then I'm going to get into, like, some of the deeper parts of what's actually going on uh, in this video. Uh, so, now, here we go. They're not hearing about the peaceful extraterrestrial crap. What they're seeing are released, supposedly leaked documents, leaked videos much of which is not even true. All right, I'm going to stop right there. So there is this idea that <clears throat> what we are seeing in these videos and, and that have been released by Jeremy Corbell and talked about with uh, Christopher Mellon and uh, Louis Elizondo and George Knapp and everything is that this is all this is all a government hoax. Like this is a disinformation psyops kind of thing. And I think uh, you know the more that this keeps going on, I'm I'm gonna do a video on how this isn't a psyops mission because it's just it's not it's that that's not what's going on and. Uh, yeah, let's, let's keep going. They're not real. It's faked right there. And it's being presented in a format that is to cause fear, to make us see the crafts and the beings as enemies. There's no question whatsoever. So here is Daniel Sheehan. I, I can't. It's S-H-E-E-H-A-N. So I butcher names all the time. Everybody who has watched like two of my videos know that I butcher names repeatedly. So uh, don't get mad. Don't get mad. If it's the first time you've ever seen one of my videos, I butcher names. He has gone on record. This gentleman right here has gone on record to basically say everything that he said in this video was strategically edited and is bullshit so to go to go on let's go right here uh this is a screen grab from a facebook post that he made uh he's a lawyer for those of you that don't know and everything before here he's talking about uh when the when the interview took place and so let's let's focus in on this uh the theory that the recent confirmation by our defense department that a clear majority of the 2004 to 2017 reports of ufos are real quote physical quote real physical vehicles is part of some secret plan on the part of our national security state bureaucracy to stage some imminent false flag quotes again uh fake alien invasion nor do i degree nor excuse me sorry nor do i agree with dr stephen greer's public assertions that either louis elizondo or lou elizondo or chris mellon are part of any such covert plan I instead am firmly convinced that both Lou Elizondo and Chris Mellon are engaged in an entirely good faith effort to expose the fact that some of these members of our United States government 
are in possession of information that reveals not only that UFOs are real, but that the significant majority of the experts within our United States government who are, quote, briefed in on any significant portion of the information that our government agencies possess regarding UFO or UAP phenomenon hold a good faith and well-founded belief that a substantial portion of the reliably reported sightings of UFOs are indeed, quote, <clears throat> off-world vehicles. That is important. It is important that they be so we'll we'll get to that of an extraterrestrial origin and i expressly stated my disagreement with dr greer's representation to the contrary in my april 24th interview but this statement was edited out of my interview and what i said about the cabal that is secreting this information was inserted into Dr. Greer's attack on Louis Elizondo and Chris Mellon. That made it look like I was attributing them some role in Dr. Greer's projected planned fake alien invasion. I want it made clear, this is important, I want it made clear that I am expressly, publicly disagreeing with Dr. Greer's, char Dr. Greer's characterization of Louis Elizondo and Christopher Mellon. And I am publicly stating that my statements of April 24, 2021 made about an entirely different unconstitutional cabal were placed out of context in the documentary film entitled The Great Hoax. <coughs> Excuse me. Which gave the false impression that I was indicating that I believe that my own client, Lou Elizondo, as well as Mr. Christopher Mellon, were privy to and not part of such an, such an unconstitutional conspiracy. They are capital not. So this is really important because, because what's going on when, when we go back to the cosmic hoax. And let, let's take a look at Let's take a look at this clip that was strategically edited. According to the person you're seeing right now, according to him, this was strategically edited to play a narrative that Stephen Greer is pushing. However, the, the elite that are in charge of the national security state infrastructure, uh, both the official infrastructure and the unofficial infrastructure, are in fact not only fascistic in their economic vision, but they're racist. So I'm telling you, when you see the, the documentation that goes on inside the third row. So we're playing when we are, what's happening in this video, in this documentary, is they are playing on key words that have a triggering effect for a lot of people so when you say fascistic or this fascist capital capitalistic mind view you you automatically get certain people on your side this racist capitalist fascistic cabal that's those that's so many key words right there so many people are going to look at that and hear that and they're going to be like, oh yeah, these people, these people, Louis Elizondo or Lou Elizondo and, and Corbell, they are fascist and they are racist and they are capitalist and I don't like those things. And because of that, I really, really don't like those people. So it's, let, let's continue for a little bit. Right. And in, in the courses that they were teaching at those, at the thing called uh, the Ordensbergen, the Ordensbergen was this series of four castles where they trained the SS people and you get access to their documents where they're talking about this eugenics and, and everything. Why is it that they hate the Jewish people the way they do? 
And people don't have any idea. People don't, people got some weird, distant ideas about this, mainly because we allied so closely with the fascists, <clears throat> even immediately after World War II. They suppressed all of this information about them. So what we don't know, because of the way this segued into this, is we don't know what question he was asked. And that's important. Because he could have been asked something completely not, not related to UFOs and went with this. And then, so this is how deceptive editing works. You ask a question that has nothing to do with the topic that you are talking about because you know the person you are questioning has an affinity for that topic. So if you ask them a question, and this is actually part of what Dr. Greer is doing right here, because he's the one interviewing him. So what Dr. Greer is doing right here is actually the types of techniques that you would use in counterintelligence in uh, debriefing somebody and uh, interrogation, you would you ask them a couple of questions about what you want to know, what you really want to know. But before that, before you sprinkle those in, you get them talking. So you start you start talking about things that really motivate them. You start talking about the things that really drive that person. So if I was talking to somebody who I disagree with, fundamentally disagree with, and I want to have an argument, so to speak, with them, I'm not going to jump right into it. I'm going to start talking about other things. So what I'll talk about, like if we're outside and I want to talk to some, what I, I want to talk to somebody about subject A, but to get to subject A, I'm going to go to like subject D before I even start talking to them. So well, before I start getting to subject A. So without this being too confusing, let's we'll do like a, uh, a little uh, <clears throat> demonstration, right? So to demonstrate, if I want to talk to somebody about something Biden, the president said yesterday, just just making something up, right? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be like, man, it is hot outside. And they're going to go, yeah, man, it's so hot outside right now. And then we'll start talking about the weather. And then I'll be like, hey, I'll start testing the water. So I'll be like, hey, did you hear about this? Did, what, what do you think about that? And they're, they're leading questions. And then they'll start going, well, you know, I kind of think this about that. And then you're like, yeah, but like. Does, isn't that weird? Like, doesn't doesn't that seem weird? Like, there's a there is a whole way to build a conversation to get the information you want out of somebody without them even knowing they're giving you the information you want. It is so easy to get people to talk about where they live, how many people live in their house. Like, if I come up to somebody and I'm like, "Dude, oh my god." The wrong, so this is, this is the wrong way. So like the wrong way to do it is to be like, dude, oh my God, I have so many guns. Shuts down a conversation. But if you want to dig in to find out what somebody else has and what's in their house, so you start talking about like little things, right? You talk about, oh man, I was watching the game the other day and they're like, oh yeah, I saw the game. Yeah, it's cool. This happened and this happened and I'm like, yeah, this, that, and the other. And then eventually you get into like, so what kind of sound system do you have, right? Like, what do you have? And they're like, oh, I got this. And you're like, oh man, I got this and it is awesome. You, this is how you extrapolate information out of people. You put them into a relaxed condition and then you get what you want out of them. And then you use that against them. And that's what's happening here. Because he, he literally said, everything in that video is bullshit. That is not my position. This is not what I think. And it was strategically edited to make it seem like 
That is what I think. And honestly, looking at the video, so I, like I said, I watched the video last night, and there's a lot to it where it's like, dude, like he's he specifically attacks uh, Christopher Mellon, and let me see if I can find the little expose, as Greer puts it, part where uh oh and then he plays this I would not be the same two people laughed a few people cried most people were silent I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture the Bhagavad Gita now I am become death the destroyer of worlds I suppose we all thought that one way or another. I am death, the destroyer of worlds, plural. Stop. So now we're taking Hindu scripture, which admittedly has a lot of UFOE stuff in it. Now we're taking that as face value. So what? God, this is this is so aggravating this is so aggravating because it's obviously a hit piece so what's happening right now is they're using the atomic bomb and the remarks made by one of the inventors of the atomic bomb when he quoted Hindu scripture as he knew that these weapons were were affecting alien planets light years away. And but by the way, one of the things they talk about is how ultra terrestrial beings are not existent. And then they talk about ultra terrestrial beings. So I'm I'm really aggravated by this and I I wish I wasn't, but I'm really really aggravated by this because he has done some really good stuff in the past but ever since 2017 he is like he being Dr. Greer and his organization have kind of flipped the script and just been like everything that does not agree with us is wrong that is not how we do this. That is not how we get to the point of disclosure. You're all for disclosure. Uh, assumingly, he's all for disclosure. There's there's one other thing I want to talk about. Yeah, here it is. So... ARVs, which is a uh, alien reconstructed vehicle, alien reproduction vehicle, and I want to talk about this because we'll we'll show the clip and then I'm sorry it's not full screen. Yeah, you got to look at all this other stuff, but let's let's get into this. Distinguishable from actual ET craft. These rogue, covert operations within the military-industrial complex stage thousands... Stop! <clears throat> right there. So the idea that he is going with is that we have reproduction vehicles of UFOs. We have reverse-engineered all of it. Every single thing. And we've built our own UFOs. And we are flying our own UFOs. And we're doing it to fuck with our own people. Really? That's that's what we're doing? So we're, we're ignoring everything, every conflict that we're involved, involved in. And all of the lives lost. Because we want to fuck with our own people. Because in 50 years... From when we first started flying these things. We want to do a false flag. 
operation. When everybody who would be at that point in time, everybody who would be in charge of it will be dead. Think about that. Everybody, when this shit started, would be dead by the time their plans were were created, were seen through. But, we have man-made UFOs. Yeah, that's what we have. Man-made UFOs. And he's going to, right now, we're going to see... How you can tell the difference between a man-made UFO and a real UFO. By the way, the the V-shaped UFOs, in my mind, make no fucking sense. Why would you create a craft like that? It makes no sense. Structurally, no sense. None. None at all. Say, Say you're here, right? And you need to go over here. What are you going to fucking run all the way around? These things make no sense. This, this structure, the V structure, the ships probably are actually like this. They're a triangle. They're not a fucking V. We just, there's no lights here between here and here. So we don't see it, right? No, for, okay. Thousands of sightings abductions, mutilations, and disturbing encounters with our public-facing military. Knowing these incidents will be mistaken for ET craft. This confusion between what is extraterrestrial... I like how, so a lot of people have said, because this specific footage right here, because there was blinking lights, people have said, well, those are FAA lights, so... Especially Mick West. So... He has said those are FAA lights, so what you're seeing is a out-of-focus commercial airplane flying in the night sky. And because the aperture is triangular shaped on this these night vision devices, though they're triangular shaped, though none of these stars are triangular shaped. But what do I know? It's real, and what is man made? Is essential. Oh, there's another one. Off a false flag that would be blamed on aliens. Uh, this is uh, from 1983. Hudson Valley, very famous cases. Many, many witnesses to these uh, transformer sounding objects. And underneath, when they were close, you can see superstructure and tubes and other things. That is not extraterrestrial. No. <clears throat> what? So. All right, let's go. Have there been extraterrestrial vehicles of boomerang and other shapes? Yes. But what do you think to get the idea? And also, how else do you create a false flag? You have to create structures that would be believably not aerodynamic. Some of them are kind of hybrids. They'll have some conventional propulsion as well as electrogravitic, and they all have structural, superstructure components that are clearly a man-made machine, not an interstellar vehicle. And this is 1989 in Belgium that you can see all the tubes and structures underneath. So the idea, all right, 1989. <clears throat> and what I like to use as a reference is the F-22. So the F-22 program started in 1981. That is where the U.S. Air Force said, we're going to need to replace the F-15, and we want it to be stealth, because at that point, like I think it was like the 70s, they were working, working on the F-117. They are like, we want it to be stealth, but, I mean, we want it to be better than the F-117, because it was like a light bomber. And we don't want all these pointy angles and everything. So the F-22 was developed. Started The program started in 1981. The first flight took place 10 years later in 91 with the YF-22. It might have been 90. Don't, 
down in the comments, you're gonna, you're gonna fucking Wikipedia this, and you're gonna be like, oh, you're wrong, and your whole video is wrong, because uh, the YF-22 took its first flight in uh, 1989. Or 1991, so the whole video's wrong. Whatever. Shut up. Anyways, the first YF-22 took its flight, I'm going to say 1990, because that's safe. It's fucking safe. It was nine years after the program was started with the YF-22, which was, well, argumentally a better plane, but... It took another 15 years. 15. One. Five. Years. Before that plane ever went into service. So if you put it all together, it's 25 fucking years from when the Air Force said, Hey, Lockheed. Hey, Boeing. We need a new plane. Has to be stealth. Figure it out. 24 years before it entered service. But he's telling us that out of Area 51 or Nellis Air Force Base or wherever the fuck these are flying out of, we already have anti-gravity craft and we have had them for decades. Why are we not using this technology to skull fuck our enemies? Again, this is global. These are global. also well-known platforms. You can basically, once you get your lifter system. This ties into the TR-3B and the secret space force. Both ideas that I cannot stand. But we'll get into that later. System in place that causes mass cancellation. You can create any kind of air structure around it. And it doesn't matter if it's aerodynamic or not, because the way it moves, it moves, let's say, the molecules of air around it. So it's basically moving an electromagnetic field effect so there's no resistance and there is no sonic boom that's man-made we've had it for decades we have not had this shit for decades with the with the condition that the the airline company is are in right now that boeing is in that uh airbus is in that cessna and everybody else like if this is if this is shit that we've had for decades why why have we not had a single fucking craft capable of it? Why? Tell me why. Come on. Tell me why. I want to know. I want to know why we have the limitations that we have. And don't, don't go, there's a government conspiracy against. Because you're just going to sound like fucking Jesse Ventura... Or Alex Jones, which who's been right about a few things lately, but d you're just gonna sound really fucking weird. Well, they don't want us to have the anti gravity uh, technology because if we have the anti gravity technology, then uh, big oil fails. No, it doesn't. Because 99% of the shit that you have is fucking plastic, right? Plastic is a petroleum product. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. So, the lubes. So, metal-on-metal metal contact doesn't end well for both metals. So, you have to have a lubrication. And that's generally a petroleum product. And, oh, God, I'm shooting so many holes in this. It might as well be fucking Swiss cheese. Well, that loads it up for this video of a lot of things. Um, yeah, you know what? Tell me what you think down in the comment section below. Um... Yeah, this is 
this really this this documentary really aggravated me I'm not gonna say I'm triggered I don't get triggered if I'm triggered it's because I'm pulling a trigger but this is what it is and you know what this is this is the state of the UFO community right now so if if you have anything to add go ahead add it um oh god I have to add a I have to add a word I have to add a word um let's add Greer G R E E R for grifter because at this point Greer is grifting <clears throat> um anything that doesn't mesh with what he has put forward is a government conspiracy and at this point like dude stop stop just fucking stop all right, so uh, I'm sure many of you that view this will have something to say if you view it this long. And I know Cass Fashy will view it this long. So, uh, hi Cass. <laughs>